I am here with once again another unique character in the esports scene. Sir, what is your name? And I guess your gamer tag. It's my uh, Brad Gamers for Christ. Um, Gamers for Christ, 52's Gamer Tag. Brad with Gamers for Christ. Is Gamers for Christ. This is definitely a new thing. You guys have been around for a little while. Right. It's not completely fairly new. Right. But I, I, to my knowledge, I don't know any other kind of, if I could say, religious organization, religious area uh, for gamer support that I know of besides you guys. So right. how did Gamers for Christ come to be? Well, you know, I kind of grew up riding motocross. And at the events all the time, I had a pastor at the track. And uh, it just really caught my eye that, you know, the, they are they're always there for the kids that pass away. And to come to these events, I've never seen that at all, these events. And I've seen kids, you know, doing things that I didn't really care for. You know, I got in a drink and different people were like, you know, there's different drugs in this sport that we're seeing. And I didn't really see much leadership. And so I want to come about to help bring leadership about. Not saying these kids don't have leadership, but I think it's important to be here as an example. And so we try to make sure and be a part of the teams, um, sponsor teams, host Bible studies at the events, the live events. I mean, a lot of pros come, a lot of amateur kids we've reached and prayed for. Um, you know, it's it's been a great thing, and we've we started coming to them in 2011. All the MLG events. I went to Evo as well in Las Vegas a few months back. Um, and it's just, it keeps on growing, and we're reaching a lot of kids. We do online Bible studies, online tournaments. An idea of what gamers do, what they're going to get from Gamers for Christ, if they were interested and wanted to find out more about it. Yeah, you know, we really don't press religion on people. We let them come to the Bible studies. You know, as we pray, we help let them know that God does have a purpose for them. And like this one we talked about, a lot of people are asleep in the spirit, like they're so busy in their everyday life that they forget that God really does have a plan and he speaks to us every day and we got to get caught up in his path for our life and not our own path. And so we just make it open, open atmosphere. We don't always have an agenda we're trying to do and I don't sit there and preach down to kids or talk at them and act like I'm better than anybody else because I fall just like everybody else does. And so I talk to them that level playing field, make them feel welcome. You know, the same way as I did when I first met you, you know, as I met you on your level and, and we, we talked and we had a good time. And so we don't judge people, accept them as they are, what they're going through, whatever it is, and we make it open atmosphere, and a lot of kids feel comfortable. You know? And, and how, how has G4C grown? I mean, it, how did you start off as far as numbers-wise, and what have you guys kind of grown to now? There's definitely been some growth. I know some of my friends attend Gamers for Christ Bible Studies. I think it's awesome. Yeah, when we first started, like it was in 2011, and it was at Columbus, I talked to Tots, and we talked about doing a Bible study. The next day on Sunday, we met Bravo, Tom Taylor, they want to help out. On the way to the airport, I met Brake, another guy named Aaron works at MLG, and it just started spawning off. We went to Anaheim 2011 and had guys show up, met the Suds, and then we started doing FFAs online on Xbox Live and just every event, Raleigh, North Carolina, we went and fed the homeless, yeah. bought like 20 pizzas for the kids, the gamer kids, and they took some pizzas that were left over and took them out and fed the homeless. Yeah. And uh, it's really just about, you know, reaching out and showing people how to love people and get out of yourself and only thinking of yourself. And uh, we also have a thing called the G4C Code of Honor. Yeah. We teach kids like the Ten Commandments. It's on our website at gamersforchrist.org. And they can go on there and see that, like the Ten Commandments, how we should treat people, how we should forgive people, how we should, you know, retract music and profane language, respect people. And uh, we're just trying to make an imprint and, and teach people how they should respect one another. Because um, as you know, in competitive playing, a lot of people just go back and forth, they're fussing. And if there's not adults and mature people stepping up and doing it and showing them how to do it right, they're going to keep on going the wrong direction. In a sense, how to be selfless in many different areas. Correct. Right. What was the idea to get into esports to begin with? Man, I tell you, it was never nothing I really planned. I'll be honest with you. I come to help some kids get to one event, and I helped them get to, um, first it was Chicago Combine 2010, and then they asked me the next year to go to Columbus um, uh, 2011, and I helped some kids get there, and I met some kids. I was helping them understand the Bible, reading it, that was taught, you know, praying with him, and he was so thankful, and I was like, man, y'all don't have any pastors here? And he's like, no, and I was like, there's three days these kids show up, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no parental supervision for the most part, and uh, there's no pastors. And I was like, man, like, are you kidding me? And so I was like, you ought to start doing Bible studies. I told Todd that. He's like, oh, I can't do that. I was like, man, yeah, you can. He's like, uh, will you help me? Yeah. And I was like, well, if you want, I'll help you. He said, you going to be in Anaheim? And I was like, you want to do a Bible study? I'll be there in a heartbeat. Yeah. So I went to Anaheim. I never had, this is nothing, anything I said. I'm going to do this and plan this out. And I started with this, done a Bible study in Anaheim that just kept on. People was like, man, you ought to call it Gamers for Christ. And it just started spawning. Yeah. And at the end of the year in Providence was the last event. I was praying to God, like, you know, 
I'm not going to see these kids again until next year, and I'm going to have like a four or five month gap. What can I do to make sure and stay connected? And I literally have a, had a dream. And this dream, it had black walls. This is getting intense. I'm dead serious. This dream had black walls. Looked like the Matrix through the walls. It was crazy. There was like three to 400 chairs, and they were showing me like, you could have a Bible study here. In the dream, I didn't understand what that was. I woke up, and I just had an idea about texting kids and saying, hey, we'll do a Bible study in Xbox Live. I got back home, text kids. That night, we had about seven, eight kids show up. We ended up fluctuating between 10 and 15 kids in the Bible study. Started at 7, 7 o'clock, didn't get done until 11.30 at night. Yeah. And then, then I met Ninja, we talked about it, in Providence. He streamed the next Bible study, him, Aaron Luxide who gave his life to Christ at, at Providence, and that's when we met Brett, Nated, and um, and the next uh, next Bible study, we had over 640 kids. I was getting messages all the way from Switzerland and Canada. We have kids to this day coming to our Bible study from Canada on Xbox Live, and we do it every Thursday, okay. 8 p.m., and uh, we're about to start doing, um, uh, we're on iTunes now. So we're really? Really? Moving up? Yes. Okay. okay. So you can go to iTunes, put in Gamers for Christ. You can download all our messages. Um, we're going to start doing series. We're about to start on Christian Foundations. Okay. And just teaching p kids more of the Bible, you know, the gamers, to understand more. And we just want to be an outlet in this arena to let, like, for the Christians that are here to come together, unify, know who's among you, you know, and also reach other people and be there for them and, and uh, be an example. And uh, this, this new year, we just... Going to keep on going to the game events, see what doors um, God opens, get more of the first-person shooter games. We went to some Evo stuff. We're going to be doing more of that and um, doing an online tournament coming up January 5th and 6th and uh, just just keep on being a part of the community. Does it seem like the effect of you doing these Bible studies is kind of almost like a calming environment, something that is almost going to allow a stress-free environment, better yet, for them? And has any, has, have any of the people or players or gamers, competitors that have attended these events and, of course, your Bible studies in conjunction, have they seen maybe some better results or maybe better gameplay, maybe because it's allowing them to kind of relieve themselves? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, like... You know, um, uh, when I say Aaron Lux, I like he was so happy at that event. That's when he gave his life to Christ at Providence in 2011, and he said he had the best gameplay that day when he played. And many guys like Brent, you know, Rapture is a guy that's a part of G4C, and um, his life is—he'll tell you his life's totally changed. And, and there's a lot of kids. I know Eric Snipe down. I've, um, man, there's just a lot of guys. Tom Tom Taylor's come before Bravo. Um, Fear itself. I've talked to them on personal levels, and they've opened up. Break another kid, Kevin. Um, man, it's I know I'm, I know these guys more than just a game, but on a deeper level, and I keep track with them and stay in touch with them, and, and you can definitely see how their lives have changed. Are you guys possibly going to start looking? Maybe I'm talking in the future here, as far as trying to maybe be a bridge it seems with maybe other Christian religious. I don't know if I should say churches. I'm, I, I, maybe I'm not too sure where I'm going with this, but something that is going to be more of a mainstream outreach to maybe other people to maybe kind of say like, wow, this is esports, and on top of that, there's religion in it. Yeah, I mean, we have other like people on Xbox Live now doing Bible studies as well, trying to you know doing the same thing we're doing, which I have no problem with that. Taking the same platform and doing the same thing. We're also getting more into like we have a trailer, like a, a trailer, and we're wrapping it and putting like setups like eight Xboxes, eight flat screens, yeah. and working with churches to do outreach. Okay. to their local kids but also other kids in their community to evangelize and bring them into the church and use another tool because kids are not always out playing football at the parks anymore they're playing xbox and so we're looking to work with more churches but also like you know working with the with the top people like mlg and other company the other gaming events and saying like hey we can have a service for the kids in the event or you know instead of always outside but whatever they want to do just whatever the doors open i mean we're going to keep on plugging away we ain't stopping if people want to find out more about G4C, if they want to find out more about Bible studies, if they want to get more information on what you're doing, and if they're watching this interview and they're interested, they're like, wow, this is amazing. This has definitely opened my eyes up. Let me find more about it. Where can they go? Yep. You simply go to gamersforchrist.org, the website. Um, they can also follow us on Gamers, the number four, then Christ on Twitter. We're on Facebook, Gamers for Christ. I mean, we're all of the map. It's pretty easy to find us. Okay. Brad, thank you so much for your time, appreciate sir. It. I appreciate it. Hope you have a good rest of the weekend. For sure. Got done with Brad from Gamers for Christ. Wrap it up. A great interview. It's amazing to see how esports is factoring so much into the outside world. It's not just 
gaming, other leagues and tournaments. It's not just kids coming in from high school and colleges, but now it's reaching out to religion. It's reaching out to other outlets, which is amazing. It just astonishes me how big esports is getting and how many other areas we are really diversifying into.